out of nothingness, just like God, when he spoke this world into existence, out of nothingness, people speak folklore, people speak stories into existence and they give more and more energy and more and more power to these things that used to not exist and then they become... Watching Best Life Now with Unique. And in today's video, we are discussing what is the difference between a psychic and a medium. Let's get right to it. In a nutshell, a psychic is a person who can read and decipher energy. And it can be any kind of energy. It can be energy from the past, present, or future. It can be energy that a person is exuding or putting off. It can be energy that's stored in an object or in a room. It can even be energy that's in a place, like an outdoor place. So there are many ways that they can read energy. And remember, energy is neither created nor destroyed, and it makes up our entire universe. So that just goes to show you how many different ways, shapes, and forms that a psychic person can discern and read energy and basically translate it. And they can use this to their benefit and to the benefit of those around them. Now, a medium is psychic. A medium is very psychic, but on top of that, they get an extra layer. What a medium can do essentially is talk to dead people, see dead people. I see dead people. But on a more scientific level, what's going on is that a medium is the intermediary between this three-dimensional physical realm and the next realm, the fourth dimensional spiritual realm. And I'll be getting more into the science of that in a later video. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification so you'll be notified when that video drops. So mediums can have an actual conversation and dialogue with intellectual spirit beings just like ourselves, only in a different realm and in a different form. So if you're still a little bit confused on the topic, I'll try to give you an example. If you haven't seen the show Kindred Spirits, it's a partner, a guy and a girl who are paranormal investigators. And in the beginning of season one, they would, from time to time, invite special guests onto their show that would help them with their investigations. And in some cases, they would invite a psychic. And at first, in the beginning of the season, I noticed on a couple of episodes, they had a medium named Stephanie on the show. And then in a couple of other episodes, they invited a different psychic named Chip. And then by season two, it seemed as though they had stuck with just one psychic instead of inviting multiple onto the show. They stuck with one and they decided to go with Chip Coffee. And Chip became part of the permanent team, so the duo went from two to a trio. After seeing just one episode with Stephanie and one episode with Chip, I noticed the difference immediately. What I noticed with Chip is that he can walk into a space and he can feel things. So he kind of discerns the energy and reads the energy back to you. So he would walk into a room or a space and say things along the lines of, okay, fear, okay, anger. I feel a lot of anger. I feel an angry person in here. I feel the, I keep feeling the feeling of you've done me wrong. You've done me wrong and get out of my house. Why are you here? And then he would say things like, oh, and I'm being drawn upstairs. Let's go upstairs. Let's see what's upstairs. And they would go upstairs and then he would say things along the lines of, I feel, I feel dizzy on these stairs and I'm, I'm wanting to grasp the handrail. I'm wanting to grasp, I feel falling. I feel death. I feel somebody fell to their death here off of these stairs trying to hold on for dear life. And then once he gets to the top, he might say something like, I feel the energy of children. It's just a youthful, jovial energy. I feel laughter and lightheartedness. And then at times I feel scared. I feel scared of this male energy that I felt downstairs, kind of like he's the ruler of the house. So that's just, for example, what Chip experiences as he walks through a place. 
And then the episode with Stephanie that I caught was fascinating because in that episode, it was a family that was being haunted. And in that family, there was a young girl about 12 years old, and she happened to be very sensitive and quite possibly psychic. And just to help put this girl's abilities to the test and also make her feel a little more at ease, like she's not crazy, they invited her on the investigation with them. And as they walked upstairs, they asked the little girl, are you sensing anything? And she responded, well, I don't know why, but for some reason, I'm just gravitated to looking at that corner. To which Stephanie responded, because there's a man sitting in that chair drinking whiskey right now. And I was like, wow, she can see that. So she could actually see just like you and I, human people walking around. I mean, I'm sure they look different, but she could see actual forms of spirit, spirit energy walking around the house. And she could have actual conversations with them and she's doing this all through her mind but she said she was asking him things like what are you doing here why are you here do you want to cross over to the light and that he was responding with i'm not going anywhere and so she was having a direct conversation with an entity whereas chip was using more generic forms of i'm feeling this i'm feeling the anger i'm feeling death i'm feeling ha holding on for my life i'm feeling jovial i'm feeling this youthfulness she was straight up hi you what's your name what are you doing here like conversation directly with an entity on top of feeling all of the same things that chip would be feeling she does that too so Every medium is psychic. However, not every psychic is a medium. Does that make sense? Now for a personal example. I won't say that I necessarily have had psychic ability since I was a kid, but I will say I've had a couple of instances as a child. So when I was younger, I did see a shadow figure that would follow me around. And to this day, I'm not sure if it was a ghost or my spirit guide. I'm not quite sure about that. And another instance that I thought was really strange when I was in the car with my mom and my mom was driving and I was in the passenger seat and out of nowhere, I jolted in my seat and I held on tight and I was like, oh. <gasps> And she looks over at me like, are you okay? Like, what just happened? And I looked at her and I was like, did you see that? And what I saw was a bird, a black bird, just flying straight towards us and hitting the windshield and then flying up and over, probably injured. And that was it. And it startled me. And she didn't see any of that. And so she looks at me kind of side-eyed, kind of crazy, and I felt crazy. And when she said she didn't see anything, then I was like, never mind. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. And then literally, like one Mississippi, two Mississippi after that, boom, guess what we saw? <laughs> and after that, then my mom turned over and looked at me like I was even crazier than before. And we never spoke about it since. So that was a weird one. And then as an adult, this is later after I started practicing meditation, my intuition got a lot stronger. And I remember when my psychic ability really started to kick in, I didn't want to be in crowded places. For me personally, walking through a very crowded place, I could feel energy from everybody and it's like voices it's like when you turn a radio on and it's like static all that white noise it but just imagine that there are tons of voices just and you can't make one out from the other and i think that what i was perceiving or discerning were these people's thoughts just thoughts are so loud louder than you realize and so walking down a mall or walking through a mall, I started to feel energy and like thoughts from everybody. And it's crazy. I don't know if it just happened to be 
that day and time, that place, but I was feeling a lot of negative energy. I was feeling this really loud presence of suicidal thoughts. I was like, oh my gosh, like are all these people suicidal or is it just some, I don't know, people have low self-esteem. I don't know what it was about that day and time and that place necessarily. I mean, it's a mall. You would think there'd be more cheerful, like I want to spend money, people. <laughs> um, but that wasn't the case for me personally at that point in time. And I was getting a lot of this energy and maybe it could have just been just one person that had that really heavy energy that hit me like a ton of bricks. But I remember stopping at the mall at this coffee shop and I just sat down and I was like, <sighs> and my mom again was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, like I just need water. And she was like, oh my gosh, like you look like you just ran a marathon or so like, what is going on with you? <laughs> like we just walked from one end of the mall to the other. And I was like, I don't know, but I need some water. I just need a break. Like y'all go do your thing. I'm going to be here just chilling because everybody's energy was just so intense. And I've gotten better at controlling it since then. But in the beginning, I definitely felt heavy bursts and heavy moments of energy. And so now I know that I have, through different exercises and practices, increased my psychic ability. I think I always had a strong intuition as a child, but now so more than ever, I'm increasing my psychic ability tenfold. And as I started to understand the psychic ability and how being psychic works, I understood that I'm reading energy and when i'm reading energy from other people it's just the energy that they're putting off it's not necessarily what will happen to them in the future because everybody has free will and it can change on a dime if somebody makes up their mind about something when your mind is set it's like your sail being set and now your ship will sail in that direction and that's the beautiful thing about free will is that you can set that sail any direction you want it to go. But I know that I can tell you what a person is feeling right now, and I can also tell you 110% guarantee that if that's the energy that you're putting off, whether it be subconsciously or consciously, you are attracting those kind of things to you. And so I could give you a good idea of right now in this moment, what tomorrow may bring and is highly likely to bring, unless, unless you make up your mind about something, unless you of your own free will change your sail and change your direction. So I knew that that was what my psychic ability was giving me insight to. And to test out my theory, I went to go see another psychic. I went to go see a psychic Buddhist monk who is really well known in the Houston area. And he's known for giving people a reading. And when he gives you a reading, it's about a 15, 20 minute long reading. And he will basically just tell you, starting from now up until the day you die, everything that will happen in your life. And he'll finish it by telling you the age you will die. And I was told by friends that this is how he does things. And so when I went in for my reading, I said, okay, to test out my theory, I'm going to repeat in my mind, I'm going to die at the age 88. So I'm gonna repeat the number 88, 88, 88 in my mind and basically soak my subconscious with this number 88. And I did for days leading up until my session. And then when I got there, the first thing he said to me, which is quite curious, was, why are you here? Do you already know how this works? Why do you here? Um, Asian guy, and I forget where he's from, but doesn't speak English very well, so he has a very heavy accent. But why are you here? Why are you here? You already know how this works, why are you here? And I wasn't sure if it was a rhetorical question or not, but I just kind of stayed silent. <laughs> and then he proceeded with my reading and he goes through all the years and then he gets to the age I will die. And he says, you die at 88, you die at 88. I was like, oh, okay. 
88. So on the inside, I was like, yes, it worked. It worked. I proved my theory, but I need to test again. So I was like, thank you. And then I came back a week or two weeks later and I was like, I need to test again because you can't just do it once and call it a success. You have to test it multiple times. So I go back and the next time I go back, I had programmed my subconscious mind of thinking of I will live to be over 100. So I just kept thinking over and over, over 100, over 100, over 100. And I programmed my subconscious mind to release that energy of over 100, over 100, over 100. And I went back for my second reading and lo and behold, what do you know? I'm gonna live to be over a hundred. And that was a really powerful thing for me. In that moment, after I left, I was like, wow, I need to go home and just sit down for a minute because grasping and understanding what just happened is huge. It's huge for me because I literally changed the destiny of my life, the outcome of my life and my whole life path. I can change. That is crazy. The energy that I want to put off, I'm in control of. Like, it's both great but scary at the same time. I'm like, can a sister get a little help here, please? Like, <laughs> I'm responsible. I'm responsible for my own destiny. I don't know if I want that responsibility. But it's mine, whether I want it or not, is the fact that I had to face. And from that point moving forward, knowing it is in my hands, I am responsible. Well, then I was like, okay, shoot. Like, I need to do all of this like subliminal programming for my mind. I need to get my mind right. I need to get my soul right. I need to get it all right. I need to do some past life regressions. Go back, erase some of that BS I had to deal with in the past. Let go and let God. Like, I just need to let go go of some baggage, some stuff that I have to deal with and get over so that I can move forward and reprogram myself to be more positive and attract all of the positive and beautiful things that I want to manifest in my life. Like that's what I need to do. But experiencing that was life changing, game changer. And that same monk trained me and taught me how to meditate. But now that I've given you a few examples of how psychic ability has impacted me personally, I'm going to move on and talk about kindred spirits once more. I'm going to touch on that because they had the same epiphany moment that I had with my experiment they had on kindred spirits. And this was in the latest season. I believe it was season five, they had a moment where they said, you know what? I don't know if this place is really haunted. I don't even know. And she said, there's just so much folklore. There's so many stories and folklore, the stories they spread around like a wildfire and people all start to believe in the same thing. And nobody even knows why, but it all started and now it's spread. And now everybody believes one thing. And then they're just giving all of this power and energy into this one story of how this place is haunted and that may not even be the case it may not even be true but because one little seed was planted it grew and so she said i want to do an experiment and she said i want to make up a story we think that this there's a spirit here of of a boy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make up a whole storyline we're going to soak it in, let it marinate in their subconscious. And then we're going to come back tomorrow and investigate and see what we find. And I don't remember the details exactly, but they made up a storyline. Like, for example, they said that the little boy's name was Bubba and that he was 12 and that his father's name was Richard and he fought in the Civil War and he died in the Civil War and that his mother's name was Mary. So they made up these facts, completely made up about this boy, Bubba, 12, Richard, Civil War, died in Civil War and then Mary, Mama. 
So he had a whole storyline in place. They let it marinate for one day. And before they came back to investigate, they contacted Chip, the psychic, and they asked Chip, so we're at this location, what are you picking up on? And Chip said things along the line of, I feel a boy, I feel the presence of a boy there. I think he's like 12, I'm not sure why I keep hearing the number 12. And he said, I'm also picking up on something during the Civil War era. And that was amazing in and of itself. And then when they went on and they did the investigation, they asked the spirit box. The spirit box is basically just like a little radio where spirits can speak and communicate through using words that they can pick up through the frequencies or phrases. And they asked the spirit box, spirit, if you're here with us, what is your name? Can you give us a name? And after a minute of waiting, Bubba comes through the spirit box. I mean, come on. And then every question that they asked in regards to the fake storyline that they made up for this character came through on the spirit box. And I was like, wow, they literally created their own entities. Like the power of their thoughts exuding from them took on a form of its own almost like almost like an identity of its own and that again was just a moment that <laughs> blew my mind just blew my mind and i was like whoa girl whoa like you about to be out of a job after this airs. <laughs> you, you may want to rethink this. But she said so herself. She was like, I am like rethinking my whole life right now. And she's like, my whole career. <laughs> it's like, yes, girl. Yes. Think about everything and all that you do. How many of the entities that you have communicated with were figments of imagination, were just made up, were just given power out of nothing, out of nothingness, just like God, when he spoke this world into existence, out of nothingness, people speak folklore people speak stories into existence and they give more and more energy and more and more power to these things that used to not exist and then they become existing and then they become an actual thing an actual entity so that episode really blew my mind for the second time in life and the fact that chip was picking up on that energy made me realize that as a psychic you don't know if the energy is a made-up story or if it really happened and as a psychic it's hard to decipher that like did somebody just make it up or did it really happen that i don't know but i think either way if it's imaginary or if it's three-dimensional physical real either way it doesn't matter energy is energy and so once you have imagined it then you've given birth to it. <laughs> this is crazy stuff right here. So as a psychic, it's very important that you give everybody a disclaimer and let them know, hey, I am psychic, but what that means is what I can do is read energy and if you want a psychic reading instead let's call it an energy check basically what i can tell you is the kind of energy that you are putting off either consciously or subconsciously i will tell you the kind of energy that you're exuding so that you are aware of it and i can tell you that if you keep that kind of energy, what is most likely to happen tomorrow or in the future? But I want you to know that no matter what I tell you, your fate, your destiny is in your hands.
in your hands and in nobody else's. And nothing I can say can change that. What I can do and what I'm happy to help you with is to just give you an idea so that you're not blinded. Because knowing the energy that your subconscious is putting off is hard to distinguish because it's subconscious. But I'm here to help you with that. And once I've shown some light on it, then it's all in your hands. You decide what tomorrow brings. And same thing if you're a psychic going in to help with something paranormal or otherwise, but let people know, hey, what I can do is read energy. And I'm gonna tell you all the energy that I pick up on, whether it's folklore, word of mouth, so many people believe it that now it's, hey, it's energy, that's fair game. It's in the realm, it's in the air, it's floating around now. I, I'm i gonna pick up on that. Or it's an actual murder that happened in this house. Either one, they're just as real to me because what I do is I, I energy, it's energy. It's not, it doesn't, it's not dead or alive energy. I can't tell the difference, it's all energy. Pretty crazy stuff. So psychic, that's what they can do. And mediums, I have only had one experience personally of seeing a spirit that has passed and it was my grandpa and the way he appeared to me was in my bedroom and I know he was there because a nanosecond before I could see him a nanosecond before I could sense him my dogs sensed him animals can definitely see and exist in other realms like we can't. And they are all born with it and can do it very naturally. So my dogs jumped up in the bed and were like, just staring at this one spot in my closet. And almost at the exact same time, like I said, like a nanosecond after them, I felt something appear in my closet felt it couldn't see it at first but sensed felt a presence it's this feeling when people in those movies describe or in documentaries describe like a feeling of being watched or like you know somebody's in the room with you i felt a presence arrive into my room and I knew obviously that my dogs could sense it and a fraction of a second later or a second later as I was inhaling taking a deep breath I do that sometimes just to I don't know feel I feel like taking a deep breath helps me to feel better the energy and I took a deep breath and I did not feel threatened did not feel threatened at all I felt a very calm inviting presence and so I told my boys, it's okay. And I was just petting them. And they were still just standing there on edge, just staring. And they simmered down with the barking. So we're on the bed and we're looking at my closet. And then I thought to myself, okay, thing is here. And I was like, okay, I'm going to address it. And I suppose you could speak out loud if you want to, but you don't have to. These entities can speak to your mind or speak through your mind, like telepathically. So I can't remember if I closed my eyes. I think I closed my eyes to take a deep breath. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. That's right. And I, and I remember telling myself, okay, don't look with these eyes. Look with this eye. Open up this eye my third eye, everybody has it. So, and through meditation, you can learn to awaken it and utilize it more easily. But I took a deep breath and I told myself, okay, open that eye. And then I asked like, who are you? And I could hear with my spiritual ears, so not an audible, like my dogs could not hear it. Or if somebody else were in the room with me, they could not hear it, but I heard grandpa. And then I asked which grandpa and I heard his name. So at this point, I had asked two questions. I got grandpa, I got his name. So I knew which grandpa it was, but I couldn't see him. And so then I was like, okay, let me see if I can see him. And I don't know how, but I know that I'm asking the universe right now to let me see, to see what I can see, to show me as much as you can. I want to see my grandpa. I heard the answer to those two questions and I know something's there, but I can't see it, I can only sense it. And so 
then I could see, and again, I was looking at it with my eyes wide open, like these physical three-dimensional eyes in this realm, but I was not seeing it with these eyes. I don't know how else to explain this, but I was seeing it with my spiritual eyes, maybe this eye, but what I saw was the silhouette of a man, and it was light gray, light, misty, like you could barely, barely see. It was light and there was an outline and it was light gray, misty. Almost looked like a fog. And I could see him standing with his feet shoulder width apart and his arms were crossed like this. And he started to nod his head like, I could just see that. And what I felt or discerned was, good job, good job. I'm proud of you, kid. And that was the message I received. That was the message I needed to receive from him in particular on that day. So that was crazy. And I knew I had seen him. And my grandpa, from my dad's side, I never met. He passed long before I was born. And so that's why I had to ask his name because I had to make sure and because I was like, I think that's his name, but I'm not sure. And he confirmed it for me. And then the next day I spoke to my dad and was like, was this your dad's name? And he was like, yeah, yeah, but we called him this. And I was like, oh yeah. And I was like, well, that's that's what he said to me. You know, I was telling my dad this encounter I had and I, I told him, you know, did he have kind of like a pot belly? And he was like, yeah, he had a beer belly for sure. He was a heavy drinker. I was like, oh, okay. But he he was a bit of an alcoholic, um, but he had that a little bit of a beer gut. I was like, I could see that because his arms, they kind of rested, <laughs> rested on it. And I got this feeling that he was kind of had this stern presence about him. Like, was he kind of macho, kind of like, maybe wasn't the most lovable with you, but if he were to give you a little nod of, like, did that mean a lot to you? Because I felt that. I felt like him, like it wasn't much, but him just giving me that little speaks volumes coming from him, because he's not the kind of person to be like, you know, it's just, I didn't get that from him. And asking my dad this, he took a deep breath and got silent for a moment. He was like, wow. He's like, wow, you know, I hadn't really thought about it too much, but he's like, now that I recollect and I'm thinking about my father, he's like, gosh, I, I never heard him say, I love you. And he's like, and before he died, and I'm getting a little choked up. My dad was getting choked up. He said, all I really wanted was to hug him and to hear I love you from my dad. And I never got that. He's like, so, so yeah. He was like, I would say that that sums him up in a nutshell. And I was like, wow, that was like the loudest thing that I got from his persona, his being, the energy that I picked up. So that was my only encounter with an intellectual spirit. So I, by no stretch of the imagination, claim to be a psychic medium, but I've had one encounter. And that's not to say that I couldn't be because I firmly believe that you can train and do exercises to increase these abilities. And I know I can increase the ability of mediumship. However, I haven't yet. And however, that was the only experience I had with an intellectual entity. And I was having a back and forth conversation with this entity. And mind you, it was very short, <laughs> but it was one nonetheless. And looking back on that experience of how I could actually see energy take shape and take the form of a silhouette, it reminds me of the episode of Kindred Spirits where Stephanie saw the man sitting in the chair drinking his whiskey. Like she saw a full figure of intellectual energy 
that could have a back and forth conversation with her. So that is the difference between being psychic and then being a psychic medium. So remember, all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. We're all made up of energy. And so always be aware of your thoughts because thoughts become things and it has been proven and I proved it to myself twice. So always remember you are the one creating your reality. You are the one manifesting the life that you live right now. Nobody is responsible for you or your future other than you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this content and you want to see more of it, please, please, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you'll be notified the next time I put another one of these videos out. And please leave a comment below if you're psychic or you're a medium. Let me know what kind of experiences you've had in the comments down below. I would love to read about it. Also, let me know if this helped clear up that question for you of the difference between a psychic and a medium. And after you hit that subscribe button, be sure to click this link up here to watch a video on how to increase your psychic ability and intuition. I'll also have it linked down in the description below. And increasing your psychic ability and intuition will help you with manifesting. So what you waiting for? Get right to it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.